Have you ever wished you could read somebody's mind, predict the future, or influence somebody's decision? In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do mental magic. Coming right up. Welcome back. If this is the first time we've met, I'm your host, Presto Paul. And on this channel, I teach you the best tricks, tips, and techniques on how to do magic and mental magic today for beginners. If you are new to the channel, I hope you would consider subscribing today. Go ahead and do that right now while you're thinking about it. We have a ton of fun around here. As a matter of fact, that's our motto. Have fun, you'll live longer. Now let's get into some mental magic. And now I will enter into your mind. I'm gonna count backwards. When I get to one, I want you to stare at my nose. Do not blink, do not look away. Look directly in the center of the spiral. Five, four, three, two, one. And now that I have total control of your mind, I'm going to influence your choices with a deck of cards. Well, not your choices, obviously, because you're not here. So I have a random game buzzer that will act like a volunteer. I will deal the cards down on the table just like this. Whenever the buzzer goes off, that would be just like a volunteer would say stop. So let's give the cards a little bit of a mix up and get right into the trick. Here we go. The random volunteer will begin to deal down onto the table. Whenever they feel the need to stop, they will stop, but I'm going to try to influence them along the way. Now, I could give them a choice here. They could stop exactly there, or if they wanna go a few more cards, they can. But for time's sake, we will stop right there. Now, earlier, I wrote a prediction down in my memo book right over here, and I'm not gonna show it to you just yet because we gotta see what card they wound up getting. They have the three of hearts, which is perfect because that's exactly what I influenced the buzzer to stop at, the three of hearts. That is how you can control someone's mind. And this is how you can influence somebody to stop exactly where you want to stop and control their mind to choose the card you want. Okay, you can't really do that. That would be cool, but you can't control somebody's mind. But you can do magic. And this card here is known as a force card. It could be any card. I just happen to use the three of hearts. Get yourself a notebook, write the three of hearts or whatever card you choose inside the notebook. This is the key to making this trick work. Before the trick starts, you take out your three of hearts that you want them to choose and you place it behind the notebook. The notebook goes on the corner of the table and you're good to go. So they start dealing down in a pile just like this and they stop whenever they want. Now you can play around with this as you get comfortable with it and say, hey, do you want to stop there? Are you sure? Or do you want to go a few more cards? Say they choose to go a few more cards and they stop right there and say, ah, oh, perfect. I think it worked. They put the cards aside. Now here's the secret part. You just reach over and this is why I use the corner of a table and pick up the card underneath the notebook. Um, don't push it out when you do that because that gives the secret away, okay? So keep it in there. So you just reach underneath and you drop it on top of all the other cards. So all you've done is drop that three of hearts that was underneath on the corner of the table. I will show you exposed. It goes down on the table. Then you bring attention immediately to the notebook. They don't know that you've dropped the card underneath there. That's the secret. And you say, I've made a prediction earlier inside my notepad. Let's see what card you stopped at. They show the three of hearts and you say exactly where I wanted you to stop on the three of hearts and you have con controlled somebody's mind. Have fun with this one, guys. I call this trick Triple P with pears, peanuts, and peanut butter, along with my good friend and volunteer, Penelope the pig. Say hello, Penelope. <laughs> Penelope is gonna help me choose a jar, either one, two, or three, by rolling this die off of her head. That's right, off of her head. She is a very talented pig. Are you ready, Penelope? <laughs> she is ready, here we go. She roll a two. Penelope, you can watch <laughs> from there. Jar number two is the peanuts. I knew she would choose peanuts because inside the lid I have, you chose peanuts. What? Oh, what about this one? Well, yeah, because I knew she would choose peanuts, so I have 
you chose peanuts over here as well as over here. Give it up for Penelope the pig. That is triple P. <laughs> and now for the secret of triple P. All you need are three jars with lids. I use pears, peanuts, and peanut butter because they're fun. The reason you need the lids is because as you saw in the performance by Penelope, she chose jar number two, which was peanuts. So no matter what the outcome is, you wanna make sure that jar number two is written on the inside of the lids of the jars that you chose, you chose peanuts. Now you might be saying, presto, what if they chose jar number one? I will show you. If they chose jar number one, which is pears, you turn the pears around and it says you chose pears. On the back of the peanuts, it also says you chose pears. On the back of the peanut butter, you chose pears. And you're probably ahead of me. There is a third solution. If they choose number three or jar number three, or they say peanut butter, all you have to do is lift the bottom towards them and it'll say you chose peanut butter. You're getting ahead of me. You chose peanut butter and you chose peanut butter. And that's all there is to doing triple P. Have fun with this one. <laughs> oh boy, I'm about to share with you the first car trick I ever learned. I hope you like it. Okay, this is an impromptu trick that could be done anytime, anywhere with a borrowed deck of cards even. You have someone shuffle the cards so they know that they are thoroughly mixed and you can show them as well that they are thoroughly mixed. Now I'm going to make a prediction from these cards. I'm going to take one card from the deck and place it right here in the middle of the table. Now I would ask the volunteer to deal down in a pile, just like the other trick and stop whenever they want, but I'm not going to try to influence their mind this time. So Mr. Buzzer will be my volunteer once again and will have me stop whenever it's time for him to stop. We don't need the rest of the cards. I asked the volunteer to deal these cards down into two separate piles, one here and one here, starting from the top. So they deal the cards down, and I wanna remind you that these cards were shuffled beforehand and now mixed up thoroughly here as well. We're gonna use these last two cards to make up a total card, meaning this card right here will become the value, be a two, a four, a 10, a jack, whatever the case may be. In this case, it is a 10. This will be the suit. There's clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. This one happens to be the 10 of clubs. Remember I put that prediction there before we started? That's exactly what I thought you would stop at, the 10 of clubs. The trick I'm about to teach you is the very first card trick I learned probably 27 years ago. What I like about this trick is that it is totally impromptu. This can be done anywhere with a borrowed deck of cards and anybody can shuffle the cards as much as they like. All you need to know are the top two cards, which are obviously this one and this one, but when you turn the deck over and you spread them on the table to show that everybody can see that they're totally mixed up, you need to know these top two cards and I'm gonna isolate those to help you understand how this trick works. The first card, all you need to worry about is its value. What a value is, is whatever is in the corner of the cards, in this case, the jack. The second one, all you need to worry about is the suit, which in this case is the spades. These two cards make up a card, in other words, the jack of spades. So when this deck is spread out, you look at that card and that card, and you know that you need to look for the Jack of Spades inside this deck. So you pull that out, you set it aside, and you said, I'm gonna make a prediction. I'm gonna leave it right there. It'll stay there the entire time. Then you're gonna tell your spectator to deal down in a pile from the top of the deck as many cards as they would like and they can stop anywhere they like. So say for an example, they stop right there. You say, great, take these cards and make two piles dealing from the top onto the table, a pile here and a pile there. You wanna instruct them so they know exactly what you want them to do. 
and tell them to continue dealing those cards face down until they run out of cards. Now, all you need to know is the last card that went down, which is the jack, if you remember, we reverse the order now, that will show up. You tell them that card is going to be the value before you turn it over, of course. This one will represent the suit. In this case, it will be the spades. So you've come up with a card, the jack of spades. You say that I made a prediction before the trick even started that you would come up with the jack of spades. This trick takes a little bit of practice, but it is well worth it. It is a very cool trick that you'll be able to do anywhere, anytime, for anyone and blow their minds with a really cool prediction trick. And now it's time for the question of the day. So the question of the day is, on my thumbnail picture, what's the name of the helmet on my head? What movie is it from? And which movie in the series is your favorite? Do me a favor and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear which one is yours. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you had fun learning some mental magic. If you're getting value from my videos, go ahead and smash that like button down there. Subscribe if you have not and ring that bell. That way you'll know the next time an episode comes out on Presto Paul TV. I will see you all back here next Monday. Until then, remember, you gotta have fun. You'll live longer.